All right, in this lecture, we're going to talk about using CMake for compiling, linking, and installing software on a Unix machine. And I want to point out that this is kind of a specific instructions for a Unix machine because uh, CMake it does uh, spit, a, you know, is, is able to produce files, generate make files or Xcode projects or Visual Studio projects. Um, but we're going to use it much in the in the same way that we'd use just a kind of traditional configure, make, install. But it's something worth knowing about because uh, it is kind of the latest and greatest in um, configuration management or build system management for large software projects. And while this lecture will not talk about it, it would be uh, my recommended uh, method of choice if you were to go about creating your own uh, build system for a large software project. So if you're going to start from scratch, I would definitely using, uh, recommend using CMake and possibly in the future I'll record a video uh, that instructs you on how you might go about doing that. Again, uh, CMake does stand for kind of cross-platform make, meaning that you, you have one CMake build system that you can then uh, with one set of source code generate files, you know, Unix make files, uh, Xcode files, of course typically on a Mac operating system uh, you know, Macs are Unix machines as well, so we may just choose to not build an Xcode project, but rather just use the Unix makes files themselves. And then, of course, uh, you know, on a Windows machine, you can generate a, a Visual Studio project from the same uh, CMake build configuration. So, uh, you know, in basic use, again, uh, using it as a, in much in the way you'd use kind of the, the auto tools configure. Um, you're going to in the root of the in the root of the project that is a CMake project, of course. Uh, you're just going to simply type CMake. Um, of course, this rarely ever works. You you know right out of the box, you typically want to have some configuration variables like perhaps uh, you want to know uh, or want to set the prefix and uh, or the directory in which the uh, executables or libraries are going to be installed. Um, by default. Most uh, builds will build static libraries, but if you want to set it uh, to build shared or dynamic libraries, you can set this flag. Um, uh, CMake has a nice ability to simply specify the debug options by just simply specifying the build type. So if you type CMake build type debug, it's already it's automatically going to uh, build with you know the dash G uh, if you're using a GCC compiler. Or, a, or an ICC compiler, the dash G is what's going to build the debug symbols. Uh, if you wanted to build just a straight release version, then this variable would be set to release. Uh, in that case, you don't need to set anything at all because it is the default. Um, but perhaps you, you have a script set up and you want to build, uh, you know, quickly switch between uh, release and debug, then, you know, it's just a matter of changing one word in your input or your uh, CMake script. And, um, you can switch between debug and, and release versions. Um, you can set the compiler, so the, the uh, variable here is CMake C compiler. Uh, in this case, I set it to ICC, but uh, if you wanted to set the CXX compiler, compiler, it would be you know the same CMake underscore CXX compiler. Uh, and you can set that to say ICPC or whatever. And same way you can set CMake CSX flags or C flags. Uh, and then CMake prefix path is, a, is a, like an additional search path. So if you have kind of directories where dependencies for a project may be that aren't in the traditional kind of user or user local or uh, things that are defined in the path variable um, or the LD library path variable on a Unix machine, uh, if you want, you know, kind of specific places for the build system to look for dependencies, you can set them in this CMake prefix path. And of course, you know, I've only listed, you know, six here. There are hundreds uh, of different configurations, and each project will typically have its own variables that you can set uh, to maybe specify where dependencies are or whatnot. So. Uh, you know, these options can be specified on the command line, so you can append them right next to, you know, the CMake command that you type into the, in the prompt. Uh, if you just have one or two, like perhaps prefix, uh, you would just set it there. But typically, this is probably the more typical usage, is you're going to create a, a CMake script, 
Um, that's just a bash script, of course, you can see from the shebang line there. But then you're going to uh, put all the commands in there. So this is essentially just like stringing them all together on one command line, uh, of course, because these are uh, continuation markers in bash, which basically just means that what's here is appended to the line previous, and what's here is appended to that line, and so on. Uh, you always want to uh, remember to put the path to the source. So wherever the source directory or or wherever the location of in the root uh, CMake lists.txt. So wherever this file is in the in the root directory, uh, that's the path you want to specify. And this is important because a lot of times, or what I would recommend, is creating a, a separate build directory, uh, separate from the source directory. Because when you when you go ahead and execute make, of course, you create a bunch of object files and link and create dynamic libraries or whatnot, and this kind of clutters up the source directory, and there's reasons to want to uh, leave that as clean as possible. So if you create a separate build directory, and I'll give you an example here in a second of how to do that or why you do that, then, uh, you know, if you, your source directory stays clean, and it's just a matter of removing that build directory to kind of get back to where you started. So, you know, after you, uh, after you configure it, it's the same uh, process as, a, as an auto configure, you know, the dash configure after that. So in this case, we're using it on a Unix machine, so it's creating a GNU make files, or ge generating make files. So then we just type make. Uh, if you wanted to run it in parallel, you could type, uh, you know, give it the dash J argument. Um, if the project you're running on has a test suite, uh, you could type make test. Uh, CMake has a really nice kind of built-in uh, testing framework, and if you were using that, then you, then you might type C test. Uh, make test should also work. And then finally, to install it into the prefix that you set, you'd use uh, make install. So again, with some further configuration, which we really didn't talk about here, you can get this, the same CMake uh, build system to, to uh, spit out a Apple Xcode project files, Microsoft Visual Studio projects. Um, you can have an interactive CMake. So if you type C CMake, then it'll sort of bring up a, an in-terminal GUI, if you will, a way to sort of interactively set the variables. Um, it'll also show you what the default settings are and give you an opportunity to change those uh, settings, and those could be simply true-false values or also locations of libraries and executables for the variables that uh, you know it's looking for based on the dependencies of the, of the project. And then there's a tip there, which I just discussed, and I'll give you an example here in just a second that, you know, I always create a separate build directory within the source for building uh, my code to, to keep the source directory clean. So let's go over to the terminal and, and I'll show you an example, a uh, simple CMake. So here we're, we're on, uh, we're on Shamu. On Shamu, uh, you'll need to type module load CMake to get the latest version of CMake available. And uh, here I'm in a, in a CMake project called LibSudo. Uh, it's a it's a project that um, well it's, it's a basically lets administrators run tasks as other users, um, but it's uh, I, I chose it for the example because it's very simple. I mean there's all the C and header files and C++ files there. Uh, of course the CMake list file so we're in the root directory. The CMake list file is there. It's just a text file so we could go ahead and kind of take a look look at it. And this is really all there is to it. Uh, so it's it's pretty simple. Okay, so um, what we'll do is I'm going to go ahead and create a build directory and change into that directory. Okay, so you can see I'm in libsudo build, uh, and we're just going to run CMake. So we'll type dash CMake d uh, CMake install prefix, and I'll set that to projects live sudo and then the path to the source well like in this case I can just use dot dot because the source is uh, one directory above uh, you know the build directory and if I hit um, enter it, it'll go ahead and do a configure it'll it you know tells you the, the information there in this case uh, it actually spits out a warning that it says you know the warnings for project developers um, it's just telling them that you shouldn't uh, have a um, minimum 
required version in your CMake configure, and, and they don't uh, for this project. But anyway, that doesn't really matter. Uh, we can just type make. Uh, now the project is make, and uh, we can type uh, make install. And you can see there it's installing into projects, live sudo, uh, and, and then there's an, kind of an additional path there um, associated with it. I guess that's because uh, by default they set the path to, to user lib so, and, and, uh, to install the library. So anyway, uh, that's just a, a quick example of uh, how to use CMake. Again, CMake is very powerful, and in most cases, uh, uh, you know, your first choice should be your first choice for large software project build systems.